What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. It's Tuesday, January 8th? No, 9th. Tuesday, January 9th, and uh, yeah, so we just drove over to this juice bar. We're gonna go ahead in there and get a bunch of work in. I'm gonna go ahead and start to edit a bunch of videos for TikTok for our organic marketing. Uh, yesterday, I recorded a ton of B-roll footage, which I explained to you guys yesterday what that is. And so we're gonna go ahead and use that and create a ton of different videos to get ready to post on TikTok. Hopefully to start generating sales because we've not generated any yet. And then we're also looking into uh, maybe using affiliates on TikTok as well, but I'm fairly sure to use affiliates on TikTok shop, you actually need to have sales coming in to use certain, you know, certain people or certain people won't wanna promote you if you don't have any sales coming in already. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and work on getting our sales coming in and then today, my girl and I are gonna go ahead and start to produce those Spanish content. So we're gonna to start to produce the Spanish organic content to hopefully market to a completely new demographic, completely new problem, and uh, that should be good. So I'm actually gonna go ahead inside and get some work in, film those, or not film, but edit all those videos using the Mid Journey and CapCut. Mid Journey is just to generate those AI photos that you guys probably see all over TikTok, and CapCut's just to like edit it all up. And then we're gonna post it using TikTok, so it should be pretty cool. After that, um, I think I have a call with a YouTube channel or like an interview kind of thing. They want to just talk about our story, like how I started and where I'm at now and just everything I've learned in between. So that should be interesting and a pretty cool conversation. So I'm looking forward to that if that happens today. And then after that, we're going to go to the gym. And then tonight we're going to like one of our favorite spots for dinner. It's this Italian place called Benito and it's like eight courses so they bring out eight courses and it's like a tour of italy so by a tour of italy it's just like in certain areas in italy they produce certain dishes so they bring out eight different dishes from eight different places in italy along with a wine pairing so it should be really good uh you know get a nice nice dinner in and then after that we'll go hang out maybe see a movie and uh yeah so gotta be a good day i'm gonna go ahead into this juice bar and get some work in so i'll talk to you guys soon all right guys, so it is about 6 p.m. right now and I'm getting ready to head out to Venito, which is that restaurant I told you guys about earlier. Today was pretty solid. Basically what we did today uh, was exactly what I told you. So we went to the cafe, we worked. Um, I put together a ton of different scripts for TikTok videos and continued to film more B-roll um, in different areas. So like some B-roll might be on the roof, some B-roll might be on my balcony, some might be in the snow, some might be in the mountains. So. We're filming this B-roll in a bunch of different areas. Let me try to fix this a little bit. Uh, so we're filming this in a bunch of different areas because we want variety, right? <clears throat> and I keep talking about that because the more variety, the more ways that we can test videos. If we have a bunch of different pictures and videos of our, our gummies and our CBD, then we're gonna have a lot more ability to go ahead and test these things out with more videos, right? And with business, really all it is is a game of testing. Who can test more? And so if we test more than our opponents or our competitors, then guess what? We're gonna probably find what works faster than them. So for us, what we're trying to do is test as much variety as possible while staying uniquely uh, unique to ourselves, right? There's a lot of uh, things that you can do. You can study competitors on there and uh, see which ones are performing and then you can go ahead and try to emulate them, but you need to make sure that you're remaining unique to your own brand, especially if you have a brand because you're, you're keeping your brand image. You know, it's very important and a brand voice too. So it's like if all of a sudden I started to act like Andrew Tate or something like that, that's not who I am and you guys know that by now, right? So I can't go ahead just because that went viral for somebody else and do that for this because it's not gonna go viral, you know? It's just, it's me. I'm not him, he's not me, we're completely different people. So. It's like, um, it's, it's about your brand voice, basically. That's why we're testing a bunch of different angles and using a bunch of different clips while still maintaining our brand voice, right? So with that said, uh, we got a lot of work done today. Let me go ahead and check out what we're at for the day. Mm. Yeah, so another pretty big revenue day. We're actually negative profit today. So we're about 6,000 in revenue today with uh, negative $100 um, because we're paying our affiliates way too much today. Basically, like they drove a bit too many sales, but the sales weren't profitable. Typically, we're about 20% margins on our front end, but today's just one of those days. We've had a couple of those days this month where it's just not been profitable at all. So, I mean, rough couple of uh, days this month, but that's okay. Our biggest hurdle has really been, let me just see if I can sit down here. 
and talk. Might be a bit easier, a bit better. So our biggest hurdle has really been like this merchant account cap. And I've talked about this in just about every single video, but it's like our million dollar hurdle is the merchant account cap. It's what keeps us between making a million dollars or losing all of our money, or not all of our money, but, ever, but not, being able to scale, <clears throat> not being able to scale our brand, which means that we're losing out on an opportunity. So it's all opportunity cost. So this is our million dollar hurdle right now that we're trying to get across. And um, we're working hard on that. I mean, it's gonna be probably February 16th by the time that we get an increase. I say that because they responded with 45 days a couple of days ago. So doing the math on everything, they say it seems like it's gonna be February 16th. Um, but I did have a call with another group today that's like also gives merchant accounts out. And so we'll see if that's, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to look into, like to see if we could pursue that option. Maybe it'll give us like another 100, 200K in cap on a different merchant account. Meanwhile, we wait for this increase um, just because we need to have a certain amount of revenue in to be profitable, right? We have our overhead, which is 25,000 per month because we hire a team of people to make sure that our business stays on track. And I understand that, you know, a lot of people talk about bootstrapping and everything like that. But for this company in specific, we know we cannot bootstrap because we know exactly what's required to scale. So we have our entire team in place ready to scale. It's just waiting for this merchant account increase before we can actually do it. So everything's, uh, everything's been good. But man, let's see here what we got. Um, yeah, so a lot of refunds today. We're still going to work on fixing those refunds. That's, that's like basically our biggest two problems is merchant account cap and refunds. And once we get the merchant account cap fixed, then we're going to fix the refunds right after that because it's easier to fix the refunds when we know we already have our performance good. So we don't want to stop refunding people or, or play with our refund scripts when we know it's keeping our accounts healthy at these banks. Um, so we don't want to mess with that yet because it's a little too soon. If we mess with it now, it's possible that we might miss out on the increase altogether. So we need to get the increase first. That's our priority. Then we're going to go fix the refund issue. And, uh, you know, that might be something that we have to test with a bunch of different uh, strategies, but it's something that we're going to go ahead and try to fix. So, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been crazy, man. Uh, sorry, my camera cut out, but I was talking about how being in Utah is kind of nostalgic because when I first moved here and met my business partner, we met like a couple years back actually. It was at an event in LA that I threw when I was like 16 years old. I had a big networking event where a ton of people met and you know, if you were there, you guys know that it was like legendary. A lot of people from that event actually still work together and know each other and like it's, it's pretty cool. So, I mean, if you guys were there, you know. But basically met there and he and I basically collaborated a couple of years later, actually. It wasn't even close to like, you know, a couple, it wasn't like a couple of months after or anything, but we collaborated a couple of years later on something. Then he went and worked with somebody else on a brand and then didn't, uh, didn't stay there. After that, I had a business that we had basically built for the entire year, guys. This is a crazy story. So we built this business and it was an e com store. It was my first ever store that I ever ran subscriptions with. And we built it over one year, or actually less than a year. It was, it was less than a year to around 2.5 million in revenue, which is a lot of revenue. I was like 17 or 18 years old. And so we built this business to about 2.5, 2.6, 2.7 million. I'm not sure the exact figure, but it was, um, it was a lot nonetheless, right? So basically what happened is Hunter starts working with us. Hunter is my co-founder now. I had two other partners at the time. I had a partner called Kai, and then I had a partner called... Um, and I had another partner, basically. And what happened was one of our partners, uh, I'm not going to say any, any, any names, but basically didn't like the arrangements of how we had things kept. Looking back, I agree with them, but I think that it could have been handled a little bit differently. But that's besides the point. We've moved on. We've moved forward with our lives. No bad blood. But basically, what happened was at once, because they thought they were getting screwed over or whatever, they closed out all of our ad campaigns. <laughs> and uh, we basically went from doing like 10 to 15K a day in revenue to zero overnight. And iOS 14 had just hit. And if you guys were around back then, you guys know that um, iOS 14 killed pixel attribution. So all of the campaigns that were doing well, we tried to relaunch, but they just wouldn't do well because of iOS 14. We didn't have the data from the campaigns anymore. So that was a massive problem for us. 
and we became very unprofitable very quickly. And in order to get all of our accounts back, we had to buy our partner out. That buyout was six figures and used a lot of our liquid in our account because we had just ordered a bunch of inventory. We were planning on scaling hard this year, that year, which a couple years ago now, but we were planning on scaling really, really hard. And so we had a bunch of inventory. Our ads all of a sudden became unprofitable and we had a massive partner buyout. All this happened right as Hunter and I started to work together again. So basically, it, uh, it put us in a lot of debt. And then I remember coming to Utah. I moved here on a one-way flight. I just got an Airbnb. We were just like, OK, screw it. I'm going to use whatever I have left. Grab an Airbnb. We're just going to grind for Q4. Q4 is like the time of year where you can make shit happen in e-com. It's like if you're, if you're going from nothing to something, it's possible in Q4. It's possible all year long, but it's like ultra, I don't know. It's just something about the energy in Q4. So we were like, OK, we're going to do this this Q4. Anyway, I moved there, Airbnb, and I did not like my Airbnb very much because it, and the pictures looked really nice, but it was actually in a basement with like no windows. So I was there for like a week and I was like, all right, I like Salt Lake enough. And so I just signed a lease. My camera cut out again. I guess there was an emergency for a snow warning, but basically I liked Salt Lake enough, so I signed a lease. And Hunter and I started working together on a new project. I remember distinctly this time we were testing products. Nothing was working for more than like three days because of why I was 14. The pixel attribution just wasn't there. So it would just, it would hit and then it would die right away. And we didn't know what to do. We also had our overhead and we had about 40,000 in credit card debt. I remember being at Chick-fil-A. No lie, Hunter and I look at each other. We're like, man, how much is on the Amex right now? And I'm like, 40 grand. And he's like, dude, we should just spend it while we got it. And so we just went and got some spicy chicken sandwiches and uh, tried to game plan what we're going to do next. Basically, we came and an opportunity fell into our laps to run another offer. That offer we did about, I want to say, $8 million in just a couple of months in revenue. Maybe, maybe it was a little, little more, maybe a little less. I, again, don't remember the exact figure. It was a couple of years ago. And that took us from 40K in debt to making a ton of money. Right after that, I bought my Audi R8. I, got, I moved into like, the nicest, most expensive place in Salt Lake City. And it was super dope. So, but then, you know, of course, after that, we started Rebilify. Rebilify was our software company. We had that for, you know, up until a couple month, weeks ago where we closed it down. And yeah, so crazy ride. But I get all the feelings and like the remembering. And like, it's cool because Hunter and I were talking about it yesterday, how everything basically came to be and how now we're here building a CBD company, whereas you know, just a couple of years ago, we were $40,000 in debt and had a, a crazy business that went all the way up to the moon and then it went down to nothing. Like We've been through it. And so if you think that um, business is easy or you, you think you guys are going to just like go into it and instantly have success, that's probably not going to happen. And shit can happen in business that you don't want to happen. <laughs> like that, that business we built up to a couple million and it just went down to nothing. That was like horrible. I remember the feeling that I had after that. But what other choice do you have but to keep going, right? I was done high school. I was finished up. I just graduated and we were finishing this business and then it, all of a sudden it closed down. So what was I going to do except for keep going besides like give up and what? Get a job? No, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So. Um, I had to keep going no matter what that meant. Um, and I just full sense it over to Salt Lake City. So that's basically why being in Salt Lake is kind of nostalgic for me. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any problems going on in your business or if it's not succeeding right now, just understand that that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes and you just got to keep moving forward with it. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, drive over to dinner because it's at 6.30 and it is now 6.15. Before dinner, we're at 6.3K in revenue now. I'm going to go ahead and screenshot this, and I'll uh, put it right there. And yeah, guys, but that was a crazy story. I hope you guys uh, got something from that story. Because, dude, it was like the, honestly the most insane turnaround my life had ever had. Like, I went from on top of the world down to 40000 in debt up to having an Audi R8, having six spot and then moving to Florida and now I'm you know I live in Florida now in a nice spot too but dude it's like it's just been crazy how uh, how it's worked but check out this like little area it's pretty cool but, all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and drive over to dinner record at dinner some like of the meals and stuff get a little little wine in me and then uh, I'll record to finish off the video 
It's gonna be uploaded pretty late tonight. It's not gonna be like the usual upload time until I'm like back in Florida, just because I'm like a little bit more busy uh, spending time with people here than I am usually in Florida. So, all right guys, I'm gonna talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys in a bit.